Grab your Bibles real quick. I want to share something with you real quick. I hated to do that. That's wrong, ain't it? That thing was feeling about right, wasn't it? Yeah, the CD's in the back. That's right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, I love coming here because I can always be myself. And I promise the Lord, you know, I ran from my calling for, for years and years and years. And I think that was probably the biggest issue with me is I was just running from your calling. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard road the whole when you're running for, from your own calling. You know what I'm saying? Anybody ever ran from your own calling? And it's amazing because we just keep running and running and running and finally, when we finally get it together and figure it out and give in, give way and let him do what he wants to do in our life, we think, man, why did I waste all them years? I, was, I could have had this quality life a long, long time ago and I wasted all that time kicking against a prick. And so, you know, I, I'm just grateful for what God has done in my life and I can always be myself and, and you know one of the things I told the Lord when I first started giving way to the call on my life and started getting myself together as I said to the Lord I said you know what I'll do it okay I'll do it but if I'm going to do it I got to do it with my own personality you ever, you ever heard them preachers they, their voice change when they get in the pulpit you know what I'm saying? They got that high-pitched voice, and they're all of a sudden reaching way down all of a sudden. <laughs> grab this scripture right here. I want, you, I want you to grab, first of all, I want you to grab, just so you can put your finger on it, I want you to put uh, Joshua right there on your touch. Um, Joshua chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 4 through 5. But, uh, but I want to start over at Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18. And... Um, I, that clock, I can't really tell what it's, what it's doing back there, but who, Bishop, I know how you are. Will you just do this right here when I need to wrap it up? I know you will. <laughs> I'd rather him tell me from the, from, from the right down there than to get up here and rebuke me afterwards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, all right, we're going to Isaiah um, chapter 43, and I want to start reading it, verse 18. I want to just drop this on you. And is it okay if I just do it my way tonight, the west side? We're on the west side anyway, so I'm going to do it west side style. Um, I just want to just talk to you from my heart. This is really where God has had me at the beginning of the year and actually before that, prepping me for the year. And I want to actually talk from the subject, prepping for next level living. Look at somebody and say, I'm being prepped. And I've been being prepped for next level living. So I want to share this with you. Let's, let's start reading Isaiah 43 and verse 18. He says here, he says, do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. And then so I love this right here. Now shall it spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Somebody say spring forth. In other words, it's going to surprise you. In other words, it's going to be a suddenly that's going to occur in your life. And you know when those suddenlies happen, you're never really ready for them. You know, it don't matter how much you try to prepare for it, you just can't really get ready for what God is getting ready to do in your life. And so I want you to touch your neighbor one more time. I love class participation. So you don't understand because you're looking at the outside and you're looking at what I'm driving. Come on, talk to him. You're looking at what I'm driving, how I'm dressing, but you don't understand there's a suddenly that's about to take over in just a little while. So don't get it twisted. Tell him, say, don't get it twisted. Because what you sit next to, you don't even realize what it is. It's something going to spring up, and it's going to spring up. He says, shall, shall you not know it? In other words, it's going to surprise you. You're not even going to realize. All of a sudden, you're going to be just running through the intersection, and boom, you're going to get T-boned by a blessing. And God is going to open up not the window, but windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that your friends can... See, that's what I love about God. He's just got a surplus. When he does it, he does it to where the people around you get it. That's why some of you haven't gotten into the real destiny that God has for you because you got the wrong people around you. And God would rather wait till you get them off the curb, get them out the nest before he blesses you because he don't want them hitchhiking on what he's going to do for you. He said, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Drink for my people. Now, this is what I love right here. And can I just kind of exegetically move through this? It's all right. We just talking. We family, right? I don't have to pull no props and do no tricks tonight, right? I'm just be West Morgan all night. 
He says, I shall, I shall pour out waters for them to drink, he said, for my chosen. See, that's what separates everything right there. I ain't even read the rest of my text, and I ain't got to the text yet, but can I just talk to you for a minute? Because when he says that he has chosen you, that means, first of all, that he had options. Now, if you're the only chick in the lineup and the boy picks you, that's good. But what makes it great is when there's other pretty women in the lineup and he still chooses you. Look at somebody and say, he didn't have to choose me. He had other people he could have chosen, but he chose me. For some reason, he decided to keep me alive, to keep me here for my destiny, to keep me here for my purpose. He has kept me all my life just for this moment right here. And for some reason, he chose me. I don't know why he didn't choose the other ones, but he chose me. Somebody declared right now, I am chosen and that's why I'm still alive. So you need to understand that the devil, if he had had his way, he would have killed you a long time ago. But the fact that you are chosen makes all the difference in the world because when you're chosen, not called, because people get caught up on the called part, but when you're chosen, that means he handpicks you. He says, I want you. He flirted with you. He wanted you. This is my chosen people. And of course, the scripture goes on and on. But the main thing is you need to understand that you're chosen. Look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, say, I'm chosen. All right, so we're going to jump over to Joshua. And I'm going to read this. And I promise you, I'm not going to be long. I'm going to try to be real quick. It is amazing to me that I'm actually preaching in this church. You got to understand, it ain't been, but March will be 11 years I'll be clean from cocaine. 11 years ago, I was sitting in the crack house. Watching these brothers and other brothers preaching, and here I am in their midst preaching, so I'm, I'm, I refuse to be nervous, okay? I'm not going to be nervous, so y'all don't make me nervous tonight. <laughs> Joshua chapter 3, and um, let's look at verse 4. Right? That's what I said, right? Yes, sir. sir. 3 and 4. Three, chapter 3 and verse 4. That somebody must have tore my page out of my Bible. <laughs> Y'all ready? Then Joshua ro rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. <laughs> Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not, do not come near it. Watch this right here. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go for you have not passed this way before. Look, I want you to do this again one more time. I'm probably going to do it a lot more tonight. But look at your neighbor and say, you've never been at this place in your life before. So don't start comparing it with what God did before in your other life because it, 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 it don't have anything to do with that. This is a brand new thing. He just read it. So you tell him, say, he just read it. He's going to do a brand new thing. So don't start tripping and thinking that what he did back in the day that he just exhausted all his resources because he's just getting started in your life. You understand what I'm saying? It's a new thing. And he says, he says you've not been this way before. He says... And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourself. The second thing I want you to recognize. He said, sanctify yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about next level living. I love this scripture. I love heroes. I love studying men that just rose to the top no matter what the occasion was, no matter what the challenge was. I'm a man's man. I like men that, that have some stamina and have some strength. You know what I'm saying? And really, I'm not even just talking about gender because I want to include everybody in here. There's something that should be down on the inside of you that when altercations and adversity comes that makes you rise up to the occasion rather than tip out. There should be something inside of you that rises up. And so when I look at the story and I begin to study the life of Joshua, I love Joshua. Uh, my favorite is David, but Joshua's, uh, his, his process is very intriguing. It's fascinating when you look at it because he came up under the tutorship of Moses. 
And what happened was Moses was leading a certain group of people, and I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes, and Joshua was leading a different group of people. And there's a great contrast there, and it's very important to understand that whole that whole situation because it, it, it lets you understand the greatness that was in Joshua and Moses. See, a, a, a man's leadership sometimes is predicated on how much you allow his leadership to be great. Sometimes, you know, you look at Moses and you look, well, he didn't take him into the promised land. And you look at Joshua. But when you understand the contrast and the people that they both were leading, you understand that it really didn't have a lot to do with the leadership as much as it did the reception of the people. And so when I look in the life of Joshua, it, it, it calls me to look at the process that God has me to. I don't know about you, but I'm in a place in my life right now where I'm determined to go to the next level in my life. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not interested in the permissive will of God. I want the perfect will of God for my life. I've done, I've done all that other stuff. How many of you got the t-shirt, got the hat, got a tattoo maybe even, but you, it's just over. You know, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I want to go to the next level. What do you have for me, God, in 2016? Even though 2015 was great, I'm at a place right now where I really want God to do something special in my life. Now, when I understand that God is going to do something special in my life and I request that he does something special, I know that there's certain things that come along with that territory. And a lot of times, because we don't understand that certain things come with the territory, we get delusional. We get disappointed. Our faith begins to digress. Because we think that God should have done it this way, and if he doesn't do it this way, then we get to thinking that he's rejected us. But a lot of times, God has got to take you through a process. See, when you, when you study companies and study, when they begin to put a product out, they take that product, if they're smart, they take that product through a series of tests. Because what they don't want to happen is for the product to be put on the shelf and have to be recalled. Because then it brings a reproach against the brand. And sometimes the reason why God has not put us out on the shelf and made us public is because we've not passed the series of tests that he has put us through. And we're so frustrated thinking that God's got the issue, but it's really us because we're not willing to walk the process out. How many you know there's a process that comes along with the anointing? There's a process that comes along with your next destiny. Whatever God is getting ready to do, you have to understand, you have to pass. Look at somebody, you got to pass, baby. You, you're not exempt from this test. I don't care where you come from, what your mom and daddy's name is. I don't care how much money you got in your pocket. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care where you live. You all got to come the same way. Everybody's got to go through the process to really step into what God has for you. And the one thing that I want to get across to you tonight is I want you to understand that there is a price and a price tag that comes along with what you're wanting. So what you can't do is get infatuated with the product before you look at the price tag. And I am persuaded that a lot of people look at where we are right now and they want what we have, but they don't want to pay the price to get what we have. Look at somebody and say, it costs to be where I am today. I wish I had a good voice in here tonight. I'd preach this thing right, 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 right down the middle of it. I, I need to know who's riding with me tonight. If you're looking to go somewhere special in your life, nudge your neighbor and say, baby, you don't even understand. I've got some hunger and some desires inside of me. I got to go somewhere. I got places to go. I got people to see. I can't be sitting around just pacifying you and trying to be cool with you. I ain't trying to be better than you, but I got some things to do in this year, and I'm going to do it. And so as I was reading some of this scripture, I was reading some of this through December and through January, and, and, um, and, and, and as I began to read through it, it, it pressed me to do some study on the olive. You know, the olive and the oil represents the anointing. So I just started reading, and I, I noticed that there was, in, in, you know, in this the process of, of, of developing or extracting the oil from the olive, there is four essential steps that they must take. And so I started looking at it, and, and it's amazing how, how, how it's so parallel to how God develops us. Because the bottom line is he wants to get the anointing out of you. So I started looking at this, and I noticed that the first thing when they take the olive, they take the olive and they begin to clean it. They pull the stems off of it, pull the leaf from it, and they begin to clean the olive for the development and for the process. Stay with me, y'all. Y'all riding with me tonight? 
So they take the olive and they clean it. And, and as I was reading about it, I understood, see, because they don't, they don't process the olive like they used to back in the old days. Back in the old days, you used to press it. But nowadays, they have developed new equipment that processed the olive quicker. Gets the oil out of it quicker. But the thing about it is, for, for the olive to be processed quicker and the oil to be extracted from it, it, it has to be very, very clean before it goes through the machine. Because if it's not cleaned just right, then it will mess up the process and mess up the machine that is designed to process the olive. And this is where, I, I, can I just show some parallels here? This is where when you come to God and you begin to seek him and look for greater things in him and in your destiny, he begins to clean you up. First thing he does is he extracts all the stuff off of you that don't need to be there, the unnecessary things, sometimes the luxuries. And I don't believe that there's anything wrong with being blessed because I'm blessed. And I love material things. I like fast cars, fast bikes. My fast wife, I like all that stuff, but I, you know, but, but I believe that there, there, it's okay as long as it does not get in, involved in the development of, of, of what we're designated or destined to go through. You know what I'm saying? And so what, what happens is he begins to take things off of you that can't go through the process with you. And sometimes these things that he cleans off of you are relationships extracurricular activities. Oh, come on. We're at the first of the year. Everybody knows it's sacrifice time. We're looking for something great in a year. We're going gonna to work for this thing. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to put my work in. You know what I'm saying? So he begins to clean us, and sometimes it's so hard because we're oftentimes left by ourselves riding solo, and you know how we don't like to do that, you know, because we, we like to look like we got our own entourage. You know what I'm saying? You hang around with folk that ain't even made up their minds about you, and you calling them your friends. They, ain't know, they, 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 they don't even know nothing about you. You're talking about that to your friends. And sometimes it's hard for us to go through this step of development because we want to make it look like everything's all right when really everything is turning upside down on the inside of us. Am I talking to anybody here? Because I can go to sit down and just go home tonight, go to my room. You know what I'm saying? So he begins to clean us and get us ready for the development and for the process. And it begins to clean us up of relationships, cleans up the baggage in our life. Some of y'all still carrying baggage from five years ago. You're trying to prove something to somebody that did you something wrong and they done dead and gone. They ain't even looking at you. And you still busying yourself trying to fix this and fix that and make it look like you're going to be a millionaire one day and ain't nobody even paying no attention to you. You need to let that stuff go. Let, let, let that all, let all that debris and all all the stuff that keeps hindering you, the baggage, the, the wrongdoings. I told somebody the other day, I said, I said, you know what? Your daddy may not be with you right now, but he was there at the most, time, most important time of your life, and that's when you was conceived. Get over it. Get over it. Life don't wait on the wounded. You know what I'm saying? If God is moving people out of your life, have enough sense to embrace the process and say, God, if you got to clean me up, clean me up. But the last thing I want to do is interrupt the development of my life. There, there, there's a thing called, uh, the doctors call it, this. this uh, you know how I am. I don't, I don't know those terms like real good, but, but it's called arrested development. And I had a friend, I love telling this story because it's just so good for point's sake, but Bishop, I had a friend, and he's such a great friend of mine, but it's like, he was older than I was, and he acted like he was 19, 17 years old. You ever met those people? Hmm, they living in a 70-year-old body and still thinking they're walking around 15. But as I began to talk to him, I could never understand why his, his mindset and his, the way he thought about things and the way he approached things was so elementary. Until I started listening to him and talking to him and I really began to discover that he had had a certain situation happen to him. And I don't have time to go into it right now. It's irrelevant. Really? Just trust me. He had a situation in his life when he was a young man in his teenage years that he kept trying to reinvent. And because that situation arrested his emotions 
arrested his spiritual condition in such a way that this man became held hostage by that experience and he kept going into a cycle of trying to reinvent and reoccur this situation that happened in his life. And so what happened is his development was arrested and that's what happens a lot of times in our life. We something great happens in our life and that's what he's saying. He says, do not remember the former things. You're trying to reinvent that same old thing over and I'm over that. I'm trying to do something brand new in your life. You think that was the be all, end all? You crazy. You got the, you got the wrong one. God's like God said, wake up and smell the coffee, baby. I got most stuff. You ain't even seen the blessings that I'll pour out on your life. And we still burning incense to something that God did a long time ago, trying to reinvent it. And our development has been arrested by the circumstance. And God never designed that circumstance to arrest us. It was just a little token along the way. So he begins to clean the olive and get it ready for the process. And they say in these new machines that it's very important to get every speck of debris off of the olive because if you don't get all the debris off the olive, that it damages the machines. It damages the process. And that is what's wrong. And I'm going to get off this point here in a second. But that is what's wrong with a lot of us. We're sitting around and we're trying to figure out why we have not gone anywhere else in our life. And we're not moving on in life. But the problem is, is we're trying to hold on to stuff that is damaging the process. Okay, so, so, so he, he, they clean the oil. Then they take the, oil, the, the olive and they begin to grind the olive. Grind. That word just is abrasive, isn't it? <laughs> they begin to grind. Anybody ever felt like you've been through a meat grinder in your life? Come on, somebody. Am I talking to the real people? In here? Have you ever felt like that you have literally been put through a meat grinder emotionally, mentally, spiritually? I mean, in every aspect of your life, you feel like you've just been through. But they grind it, and why do they grind it? They grind it to make the substance more pliable. You know, the scripture says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But before you celebrate that too much, sis, you know what that delight means? If you translate the word delight, it means to be pliable. That means he's going to give you the desires of your heart based on how pliable you are. And oftentimes we stay in the process way longer than we should have because of our response to the process. Your response to God's process for your life will predict how much time you're going to spend in it. I'll say that one more time. Your response to his, res to his process for your life will tell you how long you're going to be in the process. In other words, you know how we are. You know how fancy we are. You know, I, I try to be fancy as I can be. You know what I'm saying? I try to be talking about I woke up like this, but I didn't. But <laughs> and things. But, but look at this. I, this is what's frustrating. When you are expecting God to show up in a Rolls Royce and he shows up in a Pinto with hubcaps. Some of y'all don't know about no Pintos. Y'all too young know about that Pinto. But them Pintos, baby, you put them hubcaps on there with no white walls, baby, it's something else. <laughs> but they done, they, 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 they ain't no cool no more. They ain't no cool no more, y'all. Look at someone and say, they ain't no cool no more. And what's frustrating is when we waiting on the curve, waiting, because we, we, we want God to bless us in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Can I just treat you in here just a little bit? We want everybody to see us ride up in this Rolls Royce and show them how God is doing this great thing. But how about this when God shows up in a pinto with hubcaps? You know what you ought to do? You ought to just go ahead and sit in it and just hide your face. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> you can't fight the process. I'll never finish this message tonight. He, be, he will put you through so much stuff in your life. And I'm going to tell you something. The more you fight, the worse it's going to be. 
Come on, somebody. I'm trying to put something in your spirit tonight. The more you fight it, the worse it's going to be. You got to fight it to get to the place where you say, you know what, God, just what you want to do. I'm tired of waiting. I've been around this mountain about six, seven times. I'm tired of seeing the same old scenery, same old devils, same old situations, same old people. You got to get to a place where you say, you know what, this is my season, and it's my season not because it's some situation that's just blowing through the air, but it's my season because I'm deciding that it's my season. And it may be a process that I've got to go through. It may be some tests that i got to go through. It may be a series of tests, but whatever it takes, I'm going to get to the other side. And when I get there, I'm not only going to experience the blessings of God, but I'm going to be able to hold on to it because that's what the process does is the process gives you the stamina and the ability to hold on to your blessing. I can't get no help in here. Look at somebody say, I got to hold on because I've been fighting too long for it. And if I finally come into what God has for me, oh, I'm going to hold on to it. If it's the last thing I do, no matter what I got to fight through, no matter what I got to scratch through, no matter how much I got to pray, no matter how much I got to fast, but whatever I do, I gotta make it through this process so that I can get where God promised me. I'm gonna get, I wish I had somebody in here tonight. And then the third step, I'm gonna try to hurry up. Bishop, please keep me on point. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to the next level. If you don't believe it, hide and watch. Just go find your corner and sit right there and wait on it gonna be a Kodak moment, as they say. If you don't like, all right, I'm gonna leave that alone. So the third step, y'all mind if I take this jacket? I'm about to burn up in this thing. <laughs> look good, yeah, we pay a price to look good, won't we? Give me one second, let me get a little drink. So it cleans it. He grinds it, and in the third step, it's a mixture that takes place. He begins to mix it up, puts a little spices in it. We talked about spices today, Bishop, for a minute. Now, I, I, I've been studying on the spices, and, I, and Bishop even showed me some stuff today I have no time to go into, but I've been doing a little study, Pastor Dick, on spices and what the spices, see, it wasn't really the oil that made the oil so precious and expensive. What made the oil so fine, and you study this through the woman with the alabaster box, she poured, broke it and poured it on. You study, what, what blew the disciples away was not the oil that she was anointing him with, but it was the spices that was in the oil. Because the spices is what made it expensive and set it apart from the other oil. See, that's what you got to understand. It, it, there's plenty of anointed people. There's plenty of anointed people. But the, when, you, when you study the, the spices, the spices represented truth. You know how many anointed people are lacking truth? That's what separates us from all the other ones, is we have let the word of God saturate the oil in our life, and it's brought about character, because that's really what it's all about, is producing character and integrity, because when you study the word integrity, it means strength. You say the strength of a car, the strength of a tree, it's just got strength, it's got integrity, it's able to withstand all kinds of situations. And so what happens is God has got to take you, and he's got to mix you up with some truth. So he begins to mix you up, and the truth is what makes your oil expensive. Because when you become obedient to God's word, and you start leading out the principles in the word of God, what it does is it puts meat on your bones, as grandmama used to say. It's like eating them pinto beans and getting you some good fried pork chops. You know what I'm talking about? It makes you have strength and character. And that's what God's trying to do, because what he don't want to do is set you up for failure. Because the worst thing you can do is anoint somebody with no character. The worst thing you can do is give somebody power. Remember Don Knotts on the Andy Griffin show? Couldn't give him a bullet. Say, I'm going to give you a bullet, but don't put it in the gun. Because people who are anointed with no truth, they're trigger happy.
So he mixes the truth. He gets to, he's taking you through all the stuff. You become pliable. You become easy to work with because that's really what he wants to do so he can expedite the process. See, it's not God's will for you to continue in the process. I know y'all wasn't ready for this tonight. I, I, can I just talk? This is what God's been dealing with me about. See, see, it's not God's will for me to keep going around the mountain. You know what I'm saying? It's not God's will for me to keep prolonging my future and my destiny because I cannot acclimate to what he's putting me through. It's not God's will. It's not God's will. So I'm looking at it. He's mixing all this stuff up, trying to give me some, 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 some real stamina. He's been to mix it up. Sometimes it's relationships that he'll move out of your life and then he'll put people in your life. That's why if you ever get a real man or a real woman of God in your life, don't let nobody put a price tag on it. You got to know who your destiny's tied to. You got to know who, who's called to your life, who can resuscitate the sleeping giants in you, who can wake up your destiny, who can wake up your future, who can wake you up and you can, you know, move on in life. So... So, so, so he does all this, and then, then if, this is an interesting part. After he takes it through the process, then, then the, the developer, he then begins to separate the substance from the oil. But the thing that I love so much about this is that he didn't have, see, some people pray to be anointed, but what you don't understand is everybody has an anointing. See, the thing about the olive is the olive already had the oil in it. But he had to get the oil out of the olives so they could be effective. See, you got to understand, all he's trying to really do is get the oil out of your life. He, he's trying to get the anointing out of your life so that you can break generational curses. You ain't got to sit around and wait somebody to come to your house or come to the hospital or come pray for your kids or pray for your husband. You lay your hands on your own self and say, I rebuke you, devil. Get out of my house. Get out of my job. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my fire. See, all he wants to do is get the oil out of your life. Look at somebody and say, I'm a anointed baby you don't even understand there's just some stuff hiding down on the inside of me that God is trying to get out of me that's why I've been going through hell that's why I've been going through this situation and going through that situation and fighting my great great granddaddy's devils because he's trying to get the oil out of my life look at somebody and say that's some oil down in here honey you don't even know who you sit next to look at him tell him say you don't even know who you sit next to this is an anointed somebody I lay hands on my own self I pray for our own kids I'll be going up and down the highway talking about I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke the devourer. I got my own anointing. I don't need somebody else's anointing. I got my own anointing. I got enough anointing to break every yoke in my life. I don't need nobody to pray for me. I don't need nobody to talk to me. I got... I wish I had somebody in and say, you better make some noise in here and say, I got my own anointing, devil. Let the devil know. Say, you don't even understand. I can shake and bake, boy. I got my own and on the all was in the olive, but you have to go through the process to get the oil out. Look at somebody and say, I feel it secreting out of my pores right now. You better move out the way if you ain't want nothing done in your life, honey, because I feel the anointing reaching up in my reach it up in my throat right now. I'm about to lay hands on somebody and rebuke every devil in your life. I rebuke him off of your family. I rebuke him off of your finances. I rebuke him off of your marriage. I rebuke him off of your career. I rebuke him off of your money. I'm telling you right now, I got an anointing. Touch somebody and say, I got an anointing, honey. You better watch out. I'll be done lay my hands on you. All right, sit down, give me a few more minutes. Okay. So when you understand that, we got all that. Y'all got that, right? Yeah. All right. When you understand that, that the process is part of getting me where I need to be. You don't start tripping out when you, you know, when stuff starts happening in your life. I'm not talking about little stuff. I'm not talking about getting a headache on Sunday morning and can't make it to church. Take you some Advil and get on the church. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about real life situations that threaten and causes your heart to palpitate and cause your knees to weaken. I'm talking about real stuff. When you get to that place, you don't really trip on that stuff because, you know, that's just part of my process. And if God can take me... You realize what kind of an insult it is to think that God can't get 
us through the situation that we are in? Are you kidding me? That thing ain't nothing. He does that in his sleep. I went through a situation here a while back. Bishop, I talked to you about it. I had a guy, it's been years ago, and he wanted to manage me, and he had worked for some of the greatest people in the world. I'm still dealing with that person. <laughs> he wanted to manage me, Pastor Dick, so I, we worked out a situation just before I started really doing anything in the gospel industry or the music industry. And so he wanted to manage me, and so about three years into the deal, I was like, no, this ain't working. I mean, I ain't working while you sitting behind the desk and collecting 20%. You got the wrong one. I'm from the streets, bro. <laughs> you got this thing straight twisted. <laughs> so I got frustrated with it. And, and, and so I finally, I was like, you know what? You ain't doing a nan thing. So I had my attorney write him a letter and send it to him. Cease and desist. That means quit. <laughs> So, I, you know, fast forward about six months, I'm driving down the road. It's okay if I keep preaching for a few more minutes. Anybody getting anything out of this? I got to share this little side mark, and I'm going to get back to where I was talking to y'all a few minutes ago. So, about six months later, I'm riding down the road with this dude. And this dude, you know, he's pretty well to do. He knows a lot of people in the industry, and I'm riding down the road. You got to understand, I'm just carving my way. You know, I'm just a nobody trying to be somebody. And so, so bro, he, he starts talking to me. And he's like, man, you know what, man? That bro, you need to be careful, man. That guy really knows people. You know, he, he's in the industry. And, he, and you know what happened? Holy Ghost stood up in me. You ever had the Holy Ghost stand up in you? When it's stand up in you, boy, you can say some things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Holy Spirit stood up in me. I was driving, but he was standing up. <laughs> oh, sneaking up on my back like that, you know what I mean? I love y'all. Y'all so much fun. Give yourself a hand. All right. Remember where I was. Holy Ghost stood up in me now. <laughs> so, yeah, I know what I was saying now. I, I was driving down the road, and bro, that thing stood up in me. The anointing come all over me. I was anointed to tell him off. Y'all should have been in there, girl. I'll I tell you, I was, I was verbalizing some things. I said, are you kidding me? I said, you going to tell me that I'm worried about going to court with this person? <laughs> over this situation, you realize how many times I stood in front of a judge? <laughs> and you think I'm going to trip on that? I was like, you got the wrong person, bro. I, I done been through all that stuff. You know, that's why you got to quit tripping on all the stuff that comes to distract you in your life. Because what it's really doing is pointing you, and it's an indicator that, hey, put your seatbelt on. We're about to put this thing in drive. And when we hit drive, baby, we escalating and... So, so when you're going through stuff, you just understand it's part of the process. I'm going through hell because I'm trying to get to heaven. And you might still smell like smoke when you come out of the fire, but thank God that you went through the fire. Think of all the people who never made it through the fire. First of all, they weren't even trusted enough to go through the fire. But just thank God that he trusted you to put you that you're worth the process. You're worth the fire. You're worth the trial. You're worth the trouble. Because God says, I know that they can go through it and come on the other side and smell like a rosebud. I want somebody in here that knows I'm just going through it so I can get to it to lift up your hands and say, God, I thank you because you didn't. Who I feel like preaching in here. I want to talk to the folk that's really wanting to go somewhere this year. Says, I don't care what I've been through. I might not ever had all the stuff I needed, but guess what, baby? I'm going to make it through this situation, and I'm going to make it through the next situation, and I'm going to get through this, and I'm going to get through that because the purpose that is on my life is much greater than the trouble that's going on around me. I want you to encourage yourself right now. So I'm going to do it. Come on, David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. I don't need nobody to encourage me. I don't need no cheerleaders. I don't need no musicians. I'll bless the Lord right now. I'll give him praise right now because I thank him that he trusted me to go through the fire. Aren't you glad that he trusted you? He trusted you. You're worth the fire. 
Some people ain't even worth his, worth his energy. It's like, I don't, even, I, they, they, I don't even want to deal with him. But what did I say earlier? My chosen. That means that he could have chose somebody else. But he chose me. He handpicked me. Smeared purpose all over my life. Put an anointing on my life. And preserved me. Such a time as this. So let me try to wrap this up real quick. So you got Joshua. And you got Moses. Joshua watched Moses. Great tutorship. Watched Moses bring those people out of slavery. Was it 400 years? 400 years. I think that if you sum that up, 40 years represents a generation. What is that? Uh, 10 generations. 10 generations. No word from the Lord. Can you imagine? I can't even make it through a week. Let me tell you something. Y'all wouldn't like that other West. That's why I think the Lord has me traveling so much so I can be in church all the time. He brings these people out who had a slavery mentality. I'm going to show you a contrast between the two people that Moses led, uh, was leading and the people who uh, Joshua was leading. Watch this. The, lead, the people that Moses was leading, they were used to bondage. That was their security. Watch this. I'm going to give you just a few points and I'm going to leave this alone. First of all, people who have lived in bondage too long, they expect handouts. You ever met those people in your life? Like you go out to dinner with them, and it's like they don't even wait for you to pay. It's like you you gonna pick up a bill, ain't you? I got family members that they think because I got a song on the radio, I need to send them a check. The devil is lying, y'all. They expect handouts. They can't make decisions. Always indecisive because they're so used to other people leading and navigating them through it. They're always waiting on somebody to help them make a decision. Very indecisive. And they trade freedom for security. This is very dangerous. When you stay in bondage so long that you would rather have security than freedom. See, there's a freedom right now within me right now because I know that when the lights are turned off and we're done here, I can go back to my hotel. But if somebody said, you're going to lock down the building, I'm going to be here all night. Guess what? I'm going to be trying to find me a way. But these kind of people will trade their freedom for security. Look at this. They stay in safety zones. Now, that was because they come from a slavery mentality. Contrast. Joshua is leading the children of these people. This is these people. They were born free. They were born. They come into the world just meeting adversity. Always had their bags packed. Always moving, never know what they were going to eat, never know what they was going to drink, where they are going to sleep. They just woke up on the run. Now, these kind of people, they're risk takers. They, they, they walk by faith and they trust God because they've never had the red carpet rolled out for them. I, I, that's why I, I was asking God, I said, God, there's such a, a, a new group of preachers and ministers in the world today that are coming forth. Why are you choosing these kind of people? He said, because I don't have to roll the red carpet out for them. They were born in the desert. They were born on the go, trying to figure this out and figure that out. And when you're always trying to figure stuff out, it gives you a little bit of independence. Or should I say interdependence? So, so they, they learn how to adjust, and they don't just have IQ, they have AQ. How many of you know what AQ is? See, this is proven that corporations are hiring people more based on the AQ than the IQ. Because AQ is adversity quotient. And it don't make no difference how much intelligence you have. If you don't have no adversity quotient, and you can't make it through the midnight shift, and you can't get along with people, and you can't find a way to make a way, and you constantly bring into your boss a problem without a solution attached to it, 
And so when you look at these two leaders, your propensity is to say, well, you know, Moses didn't have it. No, Moses didn't have it. It was just the people. They had a wrong mentality. And that is why God takes us through these processes. And that is why God took Joshua through his process so that when he got into the position to take those children into the promised land and do the feats that, he, that they were able to, to, to do is because he went through the process. He had strength. He had courage. And so, so Joshua, he understands his process. And, you know, I look at my mom and dad, and I love my dad so much. And, you know, I talk about my dad all the time. I love my mom and dad. They're the greatest. But there are certain things that I see about my mom and dad that I don't want to repeat. Anybody identify with that? You look at people and you say, you know what? I love my mom and dad. I love those people who raised me. And but there's just a few things. You know, I, I, I just don't want to repeat that. And so Joshua's looking at the life of Moses and he's saying, you know, I mean, there's got to be some things I can do that's different. That's legacy. That's le you shouldn't feel bad about feeling that way. So Joshua looks at Moses and says, man, I got to make this, I got to do something different. So Joshua begins to lead the people. And, 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 the, and, the, and the word says, and when you read it, we read it while I go. He walked through the camp and he said, sanctify yourself. This is a tight place right here sanctifying ourselves because we are so comfortable and when we start shaking off stuff that is hindering us it's very uncomfortable nobody wants to be naked before the people you know it's one thing to go through private failure but when you go through public failure it's a whole different story so Joshua goes through and says sanctify yourselves that word sanctify is powerful it means to separate quit running around with people who will never make up their minds about you. We have got to get to the place in our lives where we can ride it out solo. There are some places that God wants to take you in your life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ease up here in just a second. I'm going to do a declaration, speak over you. If you would come, Cindy, I appreciate it so much. Y'all put your hands together for Cindy. Isn't she precious? I told Bishop while I go, I said, I like that girl right there. Got some swag too with that hairdo. Our hair is a little bit of like <laughs> she's inspiring me. Joshua says, sanctify yourself. That word sanctify is powerful. You know, I don't have time to break it down a whole lot right now, but one of the things it does, it means is to, to wash your face. Clean yourself up. Quit looking like what you've been through. It reminds me, I love the story of Naomi and Ruth. Y'all remember the story? I know you girls know it because y'all love to talk about Boaz. I don't know. <laughs> Boaz is raising women up. He's standing straight up. Holy Spirit will stand up and you won't. Naomi, she took Ruth and she said, now listen, you're going out in that field tomorrow. I know that brother that lives up on that hill and owns that field. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I don't know about y'all. I, 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 I really believe that God is... This weekend, and, and I have the honor of doing the first night. I really believe that God's doing some real deep things in our lives right now. You know, my propensity is just to holler. I love to holler. God's slowing me down right now in my life because He wants me to grow up to be the man that He wants me to be. He wants you to quit struggling with the same old, same old get into the winter years of your life and look back and say, why did I waste my youth on that? Why didn't I just become pliable and let him do what he wanted to do to expedite me into my destiny? He said, sanctify yourself. And so Naomi sent up there and she said, well, listen, Ruth, when you go out in that field tomorrow, she said, wash your face. Prep yourself. Don't be going out there expecting that man to like you when you're carrying all the stuff that's behind you. Say, clean yourself up. Get dressed for success. And I believe more than anything, Pastor Dick, that is what God is saying to me. He says, you have cried and mourned and been through so much hell in your life. Let it go. What I have for you is so much greater than what you're coming out of. Wash your face. Quit carrying around all the stuff you've been through and feel like you got to explain all your story away. First of all, people don't even need to hear it. You don't, just because somebody asks a question don't mean they deserve an answer. 
Some of you have been crying over stuff that's happened in your younger years, and it's over, man. I'm challenging you tonight. Let's go and let's march into our future. Wash your face. Let go of those bags. Don't carry that stuff no more. Life don't wait on the wounded. You'll be sitting there licking your wounds 10 years from now, and everybody else is gone. Life is waving by to you right now because you refuse to wash your face. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be laying in my casting and my kids talking about me, talking about, well, he was so talented, he was so anointed, but he just couldn't, he just couldn't get it together. When I die, I want him to say, boy, that boy right there, he, he grit his teeth and fought for everything. Ah, he went through some hell, but baby, look at him now. And I'm telling you something right now. I'm prophesying, declaring a word over your life right now that there's going to be some look at me now testimonies that's going to wear your enemies out. The same people that told you you weren't going to mount to nothing and be nothing, watch what I'm telling you. Look, you're going to remember this face right here with that nice, pretty, and manicured beard. You're going to remember. You're going to say, that boy told me. He says, sanctify yourself, clean yourself up, get yourself ready for success. I don't have time to keep teaching and preaching anymore. I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it alone. Sanctify yourself. He said, for tomorrow, 24 hours, there's a 24-hour miracle. When some, some of you are going to walk in here Sunday morning, you're going to have your 24-hour miracle. I, I prophesy, right, that some of you come to this service tonight. You didn't even want to come, but you busted yourself up enough strength, and you got here, and I prophesy, just because you showed up, I declare, I got the power to do it and the authority to do it. I declare that there's a 24-hour miracle coming to your, not only to your life, but to your house. Your whole house is going to get a 24-hour miracle. Everybody stand right now. If you want to receive something, stand up. I don't have time to keep going. I'm going to share this a little bit. That word wonders, when you break it down, it, 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 it means that he will mark you. Reminds me of Jacob. Jacob got the greatest deliverance ever could have happened to him because he had an identity change. That is the greatest thing that will ever happen for you is when you have an identity change. Jacob, they said he limped off that next day. He limped. Because you will not come into your breakthrough and your greatest miracle without a wrestle. That's why you've been wrestling. That's why you've been going through what you've been going through because God is about to bless you in such a way. And this is what Joshua says, you've not crossed this place before. You've never, and the worst thing you can do is compare with what God is getting ready to do with something he did yesteryear. You've never been this place before. Your mind is different. Your spirit's different. There's a revolution, revolutionary situation happening in your life. And God is taking you over. I want you to all raise your hands right now. I'm going to quit teaching and do this and I'm done. If you want to receive something, lift your hands. My father, biological father, and my Bishop Hawkins taught me this. Proverbs 18, 21 says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death is in the tongue. That means I can curse anything I want to curse off your life. Right now, lift up your hands if you want to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for revelation. Most of all, I thank you for the understanding, Father, that we've never passed this way before. We may have been places that look like this, but we ain't never been here before. Right now, Father, I declare and decree over every brother and sister in this house right now, from the oldest to the youngest, I declare right now that their greater days are yet before them. I declare right now that there would be such a revival of courage and strength and relentless faith that would envelop them, that they would be able to stand and withstand the trials and the situations, knowing that you are bringing the greatest things out of them, that you are bringing them, to, bringing them into the greatest years of their life. I declare and decree right now that 
every devil that has put any kind of curse on your life, on your future, any kind of negative word, I come against it right now and I declare death of it right now. I prophesy and declare right now that your greatest days are right around the corner, that there is a 24-hour miracle coming to visit your house right now. I declare that your children are blessed. I declare that you are blessed. I declare that your marriage is blessed. I declare that your future is blessed. I declare and decree right now, I speak it into existence that on Monday morning there will be business and corporations speaking and calling out the names of my brothers and sisters in this house declaring that there will be new opportunities, declaring that there will be promotion and finances, that you will resuscitate dreams that have been dormant for years. I declare right now that every dream that you have ordained, God, and you have initiated in their life, that it will come forth, that you shall spring forth a new thing in my brother and my sister. I declare right now every weapon that is formed against my brother and sister, it shall be destroyed. It shall be broken. I break every hex. I break every yoke. I break every generational curse. I break up anything that is not of God, anything, that, any kind of hindrance, any kind of obstacle that has set itself against you. I declare right now that it shall be torn down. I reach into the heavens and I pull down every stronghold and declare that my brother and my sister is blessed. If you believe it, say, I receive it right now. Come on, say it. I receive it right now. My greatest days are yet to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to praise him right now for it right now. Come on, open up your mouth and declare right now. It shall be done. Devil, I know you tried to kill me. I know you've been trying to snuff me out, but God's will shall be performed. His purpose shall prevail in my life. And I declare right now that every word that God has spoken over my life, it shall not return void. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout yes. Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to praise him right now for what he's about to do in your life. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with right now, but I'm telling you, there is a suddenly about to sweep over your life, about to sweep over your marriage, about to sweep over your home. When you get back home, things are going to be different. Somebody ought to praise God right now because he's making a way out of no way. He's making a way out of no way. I bless you in Jesus' name. Bless you in Jesus' name. When I get back, I want to hear some testimonies. 